Hey everyone, it's only Becky. Welcome back to my Hogwarts Legacy walkthrough. Please remember none of the music you hear is from the game. Also remember that we're in story mode, so the puzzles and battles will be really easy. Before we get into the fun, my oldest son has informed me that since this is a video for, um, old people, his words, not mine, I should show you the inventory. On PC, you hit escape on your keyboard and you'll see this screen. Click inventory. There are several different sections for your inventory. This one is all the beasts you've discovered. This one is for quest items. As you go on quests, you'll collect items that will land here. This one is for pages and notes and letters that you can collect in various locations. This one is for the resources you've collected. Some you pick up in the world and some you'll grow yourself. Next, let's click gear. This shows us our clothing options. I'm not going to show you every section because they all work the same way, but here's the glasses I'm wearing. On PC, if you hover your mouse over the other facewear items, you can see how they'll help you in battle. These glasses raise my defense by 13. These only raise it by six. I'm going to choose the other ones. Oh, but wait, I don't like the look of these. That's okay. Hit escape on your keyboard and hover your mouse over the facewear option on the left. See where it says F, change appearance? Type F here. That brings up all the styles you've discovered. Don't worry, there will be a lot more. Here's the ones I was wearing, but in silver. Here are the ones I was wearing. Now I have the protection of the weird glasses, but with a better look. Hit escape to go back. Now, it says I'm wearing this hat, but I don't see it on my head. Well, that's because when you're in the change appearance screen, there's an invisible option. So if you want the characteristics of a hat, but don't like how the hat looks on your character, you can choose invisible and it will look like she isn't wearing one at all. Remember in my last video that I said Merlin trials will give you more inventory slots? This is where they would be in the clothing. Right now I have 20 gear slots with three free slots. If you complete two, 10, 14, and 20 Merlin trials, you'll get four extra slots each. So you'll end up with 36. That sounds like a lot, but there are tons of treasures out there. These slots will fill up in no time. Okay, back to the game. In my last video, we were able to retrieve a book from the restricted section of the library that had some pages missing. We also learned a few important things I won't go over now, but my last video will be linked in the iCard and in the description box if you want to see it. Everything you're about to see happens for Slytherins only. This quest is different for each house. We received an owl from a house elf called Scroop. He knows about the book we found, and he thinks that we can help each other. He wants us to meet him in the courtyard, so let's go. If you've already discovered the flu flame, click South Wing, then Clock Tower Courtyard. If not, type V when you're on the playing screen and that little light string thing will lead you there. Here we are, but there's no house elf. There's a field guide page though, so be sure to collect it. Now, what did we pass? Oh, a scroll. Scrope knows about the book, but he doesn't want to talk here. He left us another note. Okay. Look around. Oh, there's another scroll. But it's so high, how do we reach it? Oh, I know, I'll Accio this box. Now, I can never get it to where I want it, but if you walk up against it, you can push it closer. That's better. Climb on it, and I've got the note. Hmm, there's another note hidden in a pumpkin. I know just where to look. Remember the Prisoner of Azkaban movie? Does this look at all familiar? Okay, Revelio will reveal which pumpkin to destroy. There it is. Got the note. Meet Scrope at the water's edge. Okay, here we go. Ah, oh, this is Scrope. Turns out Scrope is the headmaster's house elf. His family has served the Black family for generations. So he's an ancestor to Creature. Scrope needs our help with something, but no one, especially the headmaster, can know. He goes on to say that his late mistress, Apollonia Black, was a student at Hogwarts over 50 years ago. Before she died, she talked about pages ripped from a book. Scrope thinks those pages might be in Apollonia's secret grotto. We ask how this benefits Scrope at all, and he says that he believes a treasured black family ring might also be in the grotto. He wants to give it to the headmaster, but he can't get it himself because Apollonia forbade him to enter her grotto. We agree to help, and he gives us a piece of toast. Off we go to the grotto. We get attacked by some dug bogs. Whenever you're fighting, be sure to collect these little balls of light because they refill the ancient magic meter. If the number next to the enemy's health is red, it means they're a higher level than you are and will be harder to defeat. Also, don't forget to collect the Dugbog tongues when you defeat them all because you can use them in potions. I have uncollected rewards. Sweet. Let's look at those. Hit escape on your keyboard to enter this menu. Click on challenges and then combat. The one with the orange background is the challenge we completed. We've gotten the level one protection from Dugbogs. Cool. 
I'll show you how to use this in a later video. Side note, there's a challenge here for defeating spiders. I'm not afraid of spiders, but I've turned on acrophobia mode in my settings for any of you that might be, so you won't have to worry about the spider fighting scenes. Okay, so here's the grotto. We have to put the toast that Scrope gave us on the pedestal. <laughs> the giant squid takes it. <laughs> Inside, there are several things to collect, but we get to meet a headless ghost named Richard Jackdaw. Jackdaw was a student about a century ago. He asks how we found this place, and we tell him about Scrope and the ring. Jackdaw said he sold the ring a long time ago. He'd stolen all these treasures in order to impress Apollonia, but she wasn't interested in him. He thought a map he stole from Peeves would impress her. But she simply rolled her eyes. What would I want with yellowed old pages torn from a book? We asked for the pages, and Jackdaw said they're not here. He followed the map to an enchanted cave, and that's where he died. He says we should meet him in the Forbidden Forest so we can get them from the cave ourselves. We agree. We return to Scrope and tell him that the ring was sold ages ago. Scrope is bummed, but he can be happy that at least we found what we needed. Okay, now we head to the Forbidden Forest. Everything from now on is the same for everyone, no matter the house. We can use the flu flame we discovered when we went to Hogsmeade with Sebastian. Here's Jackdaw. He tells us to follow the path until we see a birdbath. We whisper the password intramuros to it. Jackdaw thinks it's Latin, or Greek. It's actually Latin and means within the walls, like a city's walls. So there you go, now you know. Anyway, he leads us on and tells us about a few landmarks besides the birdbath. A stone bridge, a waterfall, and a lake. He only takes us so far and we must continue on our own. Just follow the map in the lower left corner, you'll get there in no time. We found the waterfall. Keep going. Here's the lake. Around the bend, and here's Jackdaw's tomb. Whisper the password to the birdbath and the cave opens, but... Uh-oh. Goblins. Ugh. Renrock knew you'd eventually lead us to whatever it is you're hiding. We defeat them pretty easily because story mode. Collect what they dropped and move on. Side note, see that I've collected Wiganweld Potion? There's opportunities to collect tons of these and you'll rarely use them. That's why I said we don't need to brew it. Anyway, let's enter the tomb. Now, when you're in a cave, if you don't remember which way is forward, look at the map. The way forward reveals itself as you go. Side passages are usually rounded off. The map is essential if you're not good at mazes like me and you get turned around and lost easily. You're looking for these symbols. Once you find them, there will be three each time. Hit them with a basic cast. A bridge starts to appear. The door opens and we move on. Make sure to Revelio everywhere so you can collect all the items. Incendio the spider web, and here are the spiders I typed you about. Ancient magic works well on the big ones. Be sure to collect the fangs. You can use those in potions too. FYI, you don't have to do this platform thing as part of the maze because it doesn't lead you forward, but it does lead you to some treasure. If you choose not to ride the platforms, hit the symbols to continue. The door opens and more of the bridge appears. Okay, so my gear slots are full because I didn't visit Hogsmeade before I started this quest to sell off items I didn't want. So if you go into your gear inventory like I showed you earlier, hover over each item and it'll tell you how much it sells for. I usually get rid of all the items that'll sell for the smallest amounts. Hold the letter C on your keyboard to destroy it. That'll free up a few inventory slots. Okay, this one you do need to do in order to get across. Just use Accio on the platform and it'll come to you. Then use Accio on the handle of the place you want to go, and the platform will sail there. More spiders. If you run around the cave looking for treasure, you'll come across these egg sacks. The way to kill them involves a spell we haven't learned yet, so if you want to loot, you'll have to move close to them and they'll hatch. The baby spiders are easy to kill, though. I got a scarf. Sweet. Oh no, it looks like I have to be level 13 to wear it. Man, I'm only level 12. I guess I'll have to wait. So we defeat more spiders, bigger ones, and the last gate is here. Across the bridge, through the archway, and we find Jackdaw's skeleton and the missing pages. And of course, more bad guys. Once we defeat them, an archway appears, and we see the wisps of magic. Follow them, interact with the magic, and go through the archway. Eventually, the room will fill with water, but you're protected. Go through the door and up the stairs. You're in a large room that may look vaguely familiar. As you move into the room, the four portraits will activate and a man will enter one. It's Professor Rackham, and he called this room the Map Chamber. We tell him who we are and that we can see ancient magic. 
He gives us a bit of advice and then he tells us there's much to discuss. But first he wants us to place the book we found in the restricted section on the pedestal. We tell him we don't have it and he tells us to go get it. We have now unlocked ancient magic talents. You get one point per level starting at level five. I have eight to spend right now. These talents will enhance our magic. For the first time, I recommend both available under stealth, Incendio Mastery under spells, both spell knowledges, swift, and ancient magic throw expertise under core, and fertilizer under room of requirement. Now we exit the map chamber so we can figure out where we are. Up a million stairs and we see that we're back at Hogwarts? How did that happen? Magic. Bad joke, sorry. Anyways, I'm going to leave the video here. Join me next time for another Hogwarts Legacy walkthrough video. Until then, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!